Alright, hello and welcome to chapter 116 of our streaming adventure. Um, talk me out of playing this deck. Nobody there, so it should be easy. <laughs> I, uh, so yesterday, we're, we're doing our legacy testing this week in preparation for this weekend's uh, a legacy eternal weekend tournaments are this weekend flights premier events flights flights so flight number one of legacy is on friday afternoon friday evening 5 p.m and so yesterday we tried the blue white uh show and tell omniscient stack which had just put two people into top eight of the challenge on sunday and while I can look at the deck list and be like, oh yeah, that, that's something I want to do. Once I started playing it, I feel like having to assemble, okay, I've got show and tell and then the thing I want to put into play. And then you also need to do something after that. So I wasn't sure that that's what I wanted to do. So when I was sitting in one of my 700 conference calls today, the I was trying to think of, well, like, what would I want to play? And then shout out to Joe Dyer, who does This Week. He does This Week in Legacy and This Week in Vintage, both on MTG Goldfish. Check him out if you aren't already. He's very awesome for the eternal magic community. But... Uh, so in my head, I was kind of like scribbling down deck ideas. And one of the things I realized is if we look at the matches we played against yesterday. Okay, that Bant, Delver, whatever thing. I think that one was an aberration. Then Death and Taxes, Reanimator, Ad Nauseum, Reanimator again. If I'm picturing like rug delver style, the delver itself doesn't need the graveyard, but Tarmogoyf, Hooting Mandrels, uh, not Deathrite Shaman, Dreadhorde Arcanist, they're fueled with graveyard interactions, Reanimator existing, um, Uro, land style strategies. And so what that led me to think was, I wanted to, Aaron, forgive me. I was like, well, what about Leyline of the Void main? Now, you're going to, and oh, uh, the Urza Echo nonsense deck. Because I was watching a video. And so then I'm just like, it was some of Brian Koval stuff. And I thought, Leyline seems like it could be well positioned, but what are you going to do with Leyline? You can't just throw it out there. And once upon a time, like, geez, 40 years ago, I won a local, like, Grand Prix trial with a blue black Helm of Obedience Leyline of the Void. And I've tried to capture that again with stuff like Rest in Peace. But I don't know if I necessarily, and it was, it was a really bad deck. Um, but I did manage to win that trial, beating goblins twice. And, uh, and then actually I, I had bounced around on a couple ideas. I actually played it at the GP, got in, I was in day two. And then I don't know if we ate something bad at the hotel but literally, I would throw up, play my match, go throw up, play my match, throw up again. And obviously, the matches didn't go well. <laughs> and I, I was losing to, I would, I would say, favorable matchups. So it was definitely frustrating to not be focused for day two of that Grand Prix. That was the Grand Prix. It was in Ohio that like survival of the fittest broke out and so that's why like 
main deck ley line, I was like advantaged against people, and I just, I literally just did not have a good day, obviously. Um, so my point is that I was like, well, where, what could I, what could I play with ley line in it? And then I happened to be reading Joe's article, and funny enough, I get to the bottom, and that's the other, like, I want to play Karn because. I feel like Karn is just kind of stupidly powerful, and if they're going to let you, the the toolbox aspect that it lets you have, as well as you could hide a helm in the sideboard and, and stuff like that, and still have all all of your other kills. So then I was like, okay, I already wanted to play Leyline. I kind of want to play Karn, and then I saw this deck list, and I was like. These are things I want to do. Now, I I do have questions. I'm not sold on this curse package. I mean, and I believe I believe this card has been bugged on Magic Online. Don't know if it's still bugged on Magic Online. But I mean, what, what other draw would there be to playing black? Because I believe, and is it called, I think it mentions here, yeah, this D-E-T-H. Is it the depths? Something about being able to, you have all of your, like, I don't want to say lock pieces, but to almost have like the lands package of dark depths, thespian stage, stuff like that. Well, no, I guess the more the question isn't I didn't necessarily want to play the curse stuff, but like I I definitely am interested in Helm of Obedience and Karn and Leyline. So I don't know, maybe Whatever. Let's just take this for a spin. We'll see how we'll see how the curses do. Now, here's the question: Is this a real? Is this a card? I I, under, I understand it's a card from the new set. That's not a bad idea, Mike. Um. All right. <laughs> Once again, that is something where the ley, ley line being useful, as well as other things. I don't. Can I play painter without necessarily having the support, though? I mean, how many how many cards is this? Four, five, six, seven. All right, I wasn't I wasn't thinking about Chromox. That's that's relevant. That it's a black card to put under Chromox. All right. What else we got? Murderous Rider, Necromentia. Are these? Are these really? There's no way this is correct. Sky Clave Shade. Is it meant to be like a recurring threat that just doesn't die? Can't block. If it was kicked, enters the battlefield with counters on it. Landfall. If a land enters the battlefield, Sky Clave's in your graveyard, and it's your turn, you may cast it from the graveyard this turn. I would almost rather have Nether Spirit. You know, the other thing I'm thinking is, okay, if you didn't have the curse package, you could have vampire hex mage and uh, the dark depths stuff like that, just as a thought. 
because I don't necessarily need the one mana spells and stuff like that. Necromentia. Why don't I play Sadistic Sacrament? Search target players' libraries for three cards, exile them, and then they shuffle their library. You can ritual that out on the first turn and take somebody's wishes. You know. If we play depths, we can go full. Okay, so what does the D E T H actually stand for? I believe I heard them on a podcast once, or somebody explaining on a podcast once, but. Yeah, I don't know what Iggy Pop is, other than, is that ill-gotten gains? Mono black combos. Okay, so if I just if I just search that, will it come up? Oh, I'm in I'm in goldfish. I do not want to look up Dethrone. Thank thank you though for the suggestion. And I also do not want to look up. Ah, yes, death. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Is there an actual card called death? Seriously? Life, death. Okay. Fair. Fair enough. I was like... I, would, I guess I don't think about it in the context of just being that half of a card. That's funny. All right, so how would I accurately? That's not what I want. Magic, legacy, D E T H. The source. August of 2019, we have a primer. One years ago, one year ago, it was commented on. That's pretty, uh, pretty classic. I don't actually ever use. Uh, I actually don't use Reddit. Here's, we're, we're getting closer. Here's March of 2020. Okay, this is, uh, not exactly what we're looking for. I got an idea. So, at some point, somebody had to have played it. So if we look up, And then we can refer. Go back three fonts. Demir Dark Depths. Vampire, Hex Mage, Karn, Dark Ritual, Duress, Thoughtseize, Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond, Lotus Petal, Helm, Leyline. It's the 
send it on to Facebook. Hey, Nathan. So. So we've got grindstone helm, lion's eye diamond, lotus petal, painter serpent, plays a bunch of one ofs, lake of the dead. Hmm. See the thing I can, the thing I can foresee with this is being at the mercy of not having like the blue selection you know what i mean the preordain ponder brainstorm like i'm trying to think how long ago was that i don't even think i had ponder in that blue black helm ley line i know i had brainstorm but Steve, remember the blue black legacy deck that I won the Grand Prix trial with? That's what I was thinking about. That's what, I don't know, I was sitting in my conference calls today and I was just like trying to brainstorm because I wanted today to kind of be goofy. I don't know if I want it to be this goofy, but. I don't know. Then again, like, hmm. That's that's legit. It, it's hard to have dark ritual and chalice in the same deck. Although I guess dark ritual is just one more way to power it out on the first turn. But it does kind of feel. Curse of Fool's Wisdom. What is that? Whenever enchanted player draws a card, they lose two life and you gain two life. Take that. I do also like compared to the other one we saw. Well, why are there why is it saying it's blue? Hmm. But yeah, this would be before the Yeah, that's what we were talking about before, Nathan. Uh, Reap a cheap. Why do you side you sideboard more curses for when you need it? I guess that's the that's the rule of law one. So is it worthwhile, like we saw in that other list, to have Castle Lockthwain as a way to draw? Um, I mean, you potentially are going to get some cards stuck. I mean, I understand eight lands, 18 lands. These are quasi lands with their flip. I think the big the big one I question is this guy. The Skyclave Shade. The like the weird 
what is it? Blood gas, nether spirit, weirdo. No, but they, they are the type of thing that can get people sometimes. And really, where, where I started this, this thought process started with, I was like, I want to play something with Leyline. What could play Leyline of the Void main? And then that's kind of how I stumbled into this. All right, I have an idea. Instead of jumping full-blown into a league, let's see if any fools want to play in the Legacy practice room. I mean, it's worth a shot. So let's, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if I have the confidence to, like I want to play something fun, but I don't necessarily literally just want to light thing, light play points and tickets or whatever on fire, so. All right, we lost the die roll. So as a turn one ley line, but does that even matter? As a turn one ley line and a whole bunch of lands. Legacy Arms mm -hmm. So I have to cash in I don't have to cash in I guess a lot of it can determine what I draw on my turn Say I draw Ancient Tomb. Ancient Tomb, we can spyglass them. They did not shuffle. They have an upkeep stop set. They obviously love casting Ancestral. Hello. Are they the kind of person that has days? That was F6. All right. The fact they F6, I felt okay doing it. Uh, Misty Rainforest it is.
can I not pay this? What do I need to do? Pay to click adjust. Go to one, hit OK. Hey. Seven minutes later. Nice double misty rainforest. This comes in tapped, doesn't it? Well, that's frustrating. If I play it tapped, I lose my city of traders, which I can't afford to do. I see you have some euros. Oh, I missed the Oko hiding in back, damn it. That's my own fault. I missed the Oko in back. That was just stupid, damn it. Oh, that's stupid. I missed the Oko and back. All right, four mana coming. One, two, three, four. Yeah, but the the larger point is we saw their hand and they only had the one misty rainforest. That's why I went after it. You know. But no, the bigger the bigger misplay was not looking through their hand completely and thinking, "Oh, they just have 3 euros where they clearly had an oko hiding in the back." But yeah, that, that's good thought going forward for me. So if I play liquid metal coating, we can then start trying to go after their lands but it depends on, so like, what did they play out here? They could crack Prismatic Vista or not sit back on, say, Abrupt Decay. Right on time there, buddy.
gonna go after Misty. I could pass. No. Force them to play the spell. But because we took the green, what's this? Yeah, I feel like that could have gone differently. So, four color snow. I mean, ideally, we would want to go after. So, it still has a sideboard spyglass. Are chalices necessarily good against four color snow? I mean, you have astrolabes. They would have brainstorm. They would have ponder. Plague engineer. This is kind of the artifact package over there. What I'm wondering is, do, do the curses come out? They seem like, I mean, it's not our only path to victory, but I wasn't sure if Plague Engineer was necessarily killing the little snakes and stuff like that. I still think, I mean, Chalice probably, but... This is seven cards, it seems kind of intriguing. We also don't have like a Tormod's Crypt or something. I guess you, you're playing Leyland of the Void, but. I was thinking I trim one of these and a helm. We already have one in the sideboard too though. All right. Nope. I would have to give up either, I could either give up Karn or the City of Traders. I give up City of Traders because I'll already have Ancient Tomb and Chromox. I'll be three mana towards Karn.
turn one, ponder. Did not shuffle. Could have played the ancient tomb first. Target my opponent. I would like to curse you, opponent. So close. Like, there was definitely, it felt like a pause for reading there. Force again, pitching Jace, the Mind Sculptor. It's a good one. So what have we... We got a Brainstorm and a guy who casts Brainstorm off a couple Force of Wills. How about this card I just drew? No, had it, had it the whole time, honestly. I need a Sky Flagship console, whatever. You heard me. Land destruction. So, what we've learned... Sometimes you just keep jamming nonsense. 